Hey guys, ECRG here, back with another episode. As you can see by the title of today's episode is titled, Who in Clinical Research Gives Employees the Best Benefits? So are we talking CROs, we're talking uh, academic sites, we're talking uh, clinical research sites at the site level, are we talking pharma companies and sponsors and biotechs? So we're going to get right into that shortly. But first, I want to let you guys know about the resume review program that we have going on. If you are interested in leveling up in clinical research or getting in, now is a great time. We have a resume review program for you. And we also have career consultation and interview preparation services also. So if you are interested in that, you can email me eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com and we'll get you to where you need to be. So let's go ahead and get into this episode. So someone emails in, ECRG, quick question for you. How do benefits compare across the industry? Am I wrong in assuming sponsors, big CROs, and academic sites provide the most comprehensive packages? I'm especially interested in an employee match 401k. Thanks. So this is actually a question I haven't gotten before. Who provides the best benefits? So when you're looking at a clinical research job, you're looking at a range of things. You're looking at pay, is the pay you know, competitive with other offers? Is it your only job offer and that's the only thing you have to go on is the pay? Um, and the pay is what it is. So is, is the pay good is probably one. Two is gonna be, well, I mean, even before the pay is probably the job itself. Is it the job that you like doing? Is, it, is Are the people seem nice? Do they seem like easy to work with? Things of that nature. You're not really gonna know that until after, but you definitely wanna make sure that um, you know, the actual job itself is good. And, and then secondary comes everything else. Um, but, you know, pay is probably number one. So if they're paying you a lot, you know, even overpaying you in cash, um, if the benefits are a little lackluster, you might take that. That might be okay with you. Um, typically you want, um, you know, it just kind of depends on the person. Uh, you know, I can't say what's right for anybody or whatever. Um, your own situation is going to determine what um, you value most. But so pay is going to be no, another one. Second, it can be if you're office based and, you know, with the pandemic and all these things, a lot of people aren't going to be office based as much anymore. But I mean, some of the office perks like dress code is going to be one. Um, you don't have to you don't want to be wearing a suit every day or a suit and tie or shirt and tie every day. So more of a lax dress code. Um, if you're actually going into the office, what kind of office do you have? Are you just sitting on a little tiny desk or do you have like a nice big cubicle? Um, that's another perk. Um, PTO, that's a, that's a huge perk. People want to take time off. They want to go travel the world. They want a vacation, things of that nature. Uh, of course, with the pandemic, people are going to be traveling less, but it is what it is. That, that used to be a big um, perk. So how many uh, days off are they offering you? Um, and there's other perks too. Um, that could be important. Like for example, one of my buddies, he's a CRA and they give him a car cause they do a lot of local visits. So they give him a car. So now he doesn't have to worry about his own, his own car. Um, so that's a nice perk. Um, and you know, that's, that's typical of a lot of sales jobs too, but he's a CRA and they give him a cars. So that's a great perk. Um, you know, if you're also, you know, how much work from home do you get is another perk. So there's all these different perks to um, key in on and see what you like most uh, across the industry. And so it's very, very hard. Different things have different ones. But, you know, speaking from a CRA perspective, there are definitely some things I'm looking at. Um, 100% work from home. No non-negotiable. No negotiations. Uh, when I was first getting started, um, they did have some office time. Um, and, you know, when you're first getting started, you want to get your first CRA job. So you're going to take whatever you can get pretty much. And you'll worry about the rest later. Um, signing a non-compete, other stuff. So, but things that were non-negotiable for me or would be non-negotiable for me now would be making sure that I'm 100% work from home, complete non-negotiable. Um, I'm not signing a non-compete. Um, unless it becomes the market standard, then I guess you have to. Um, but there's ways to get around that. Uh, for example, if, you're, if you sign a non-compete at a uh, CRO, go work for a sponsor. Um, it's not going to apply. Um, if you were, if you sign not compete with a sponsor, go work for a CRO or an academic site. 
Um, that's how you got to do it until your time is up with that non-compete. But um, just to be safe. Um, but, you know, when you're first getting started, you're going to take what you can get. So and then the higher up you get, the more and more you level up, the best benefits are going to come. Um, so typically the best benefits are going to be from the sponsor level in biotechs. These are the people that are financing the research. So the big pharma companies, I'm talking Roche, I'm talking Merck, I'm talking um, Amicus. I mean, they're not huge, but, you know, pharmaceutical companies, they're well-funded. They have lots of investors. Um, and typically once they have, a, all it takes is one successful drug to uh, finance hundreds more. Um, it's very, very lucrative. And they're going to have the best one. So, you know, Merck, Roche, Johnson & Johnson, um, these are huge. And I did an episode on this about how much they make. These companies bring in, you know, in revenue, like $50 billion a year. It's like crazy. These companies are huge across all their product lines. So they're obviously going to be able to, um, you know, offer the best perks and benefits and incentives. CROs are very, very small by comparison. IQV is an anomaly. I think they make like maybe five billion a year. Uh, very, very small compared to the sponsor. They're just a middleman. Um, and then the other ones probably make like a couple billion a year. Cineos does, but don't forget they they merged with um, Inventive. It was INC Research. They merged with they merged with Inventive. So it was at the time it was like um, I think the third. And the fourth largest CRO at the time, or the third and the fifth largest CRO, came together, um, and they became the second largest. So that's a bunch of mergers that came together to do that, um, and became the se the second largest CRO. PPD is huge. Um, LabCorp, Covance is huge. Um, so I mean, but LabCorp is a is a completely separate business. They bought a CRO um, in Covance, and. Um, you know, so now Covance is backed by a huge company. So, you know, those benefits might be greater. Um, but all in all, the, the, the best benefits are going to be at the sponsor level. Like, for example, my friend who works for Merck told you guys he has a car. Um, I've heard some places have cafeterias um, actually in the campus. And it's not just terrible food. It's, it's actually great food. Uh, I've seen pictures. Um, gourmet food. Um, all free, too. I've heard some places like that. I've heard daycares on site um, at the actual um, office space. I mean, you know, because of the pandemic, it's not going to be as important now, but they have to come with some new incentives and perks. But, you know, that's what it is um, uh, for CRAs or remote employees or for a lot of people that could be working remotely now. Your Internet's going to be comped. Um, a lot of people's Internet's are comped. I mean, my, my Internet has always been comped as a CRA. My phone has been comped as a CRA, so that's very helpful. Um, that's let's see, that's probably you know 120 bucks for free a month um, or more. That's that adds up. That's an extra benefit. Um, let me see what else. Um, plenty, plenty of benefits. Um, you know, if you're a CRA, the ability to keep your miles, use your own credit card, and keep all those points and miles, huge benefit. Um, so it just kind of depends, but I think sponsors are in the best position to offer the best benefits, but there are also downsides with that too. Like for example, you're not going to move up as fast as a sponsor. When you, when you move up, it's going to be in a big way. They're going to pay you in a big way. Um, but you're not able to move up as fast. So if you're trying to get up, if you're trying to get up to an executive level fast, the best way to do that is jump around at the CRO level and then go to a sponsor when you're ready to, to really cash out. Um, like for example, one company told me it's going to take me about three years to become the next level of CRA where that'd be unheard of at a CRO. I'm expecting, a, uh, to level up every year, year and a half at a CRO. Um, you know, whether it's from CRA one to CRA two or CRA two to CRA three or CRA three to senior CRA or however they do it. I'm expecting to level up every one to one to two years, uh, minimum. At a, at a CRO or else I'm out. Um, so yeah, I mean, so typically like the 401k match, pretty much all of them going to have the same type of deal, you know, match up to 8% or something like that. Um, you know, I'm not the biggest uh, fan of the 401k anyway. I invest a lot outside of that, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, 
you know, this person was asking about the 401k match, but that's pretty standard across the industry, uh, pretty in companies altogether, because they get a nice giant tax break for that. So, you know, there's not going to be huge differences among the different companies with that. Um, it's really the other perks that are really going to set the companies aside. Um, Health care is is, could be a big one. Um, what kind of health care coverage? Do they just give you the bottom of the barrel package option or do they give you like premium health care? Um, that's a really, really important one to keep in mind. Um, so, I mean, it just kind of depends. You got to do your due diligence. I think one of the best things to do is go on Glassdoor. Look at the different perks people talk about on there. Um, I've done a lot of reviews on the CROs. If you're looking at the channel, the YouTube channel, you can go on the playlist and look at the Glassdoor reviews. And I, I break down all of that. So that was, those are really good to watch before your interviews, if you're interviewing at a specific place, or if you just want to find out more, you're thinking about um, applying for a particular company and you want to find out more about it. Um, I also talk about some of the things I've heard from people I know that actually work at those companies, um, you know, what it's actually like to work there too. So that's something to think about. But yeah, guys, I mean, and then the, the sponsor benefits, you know, they're going to be pretty similar. The, the difference is going to be in the style of work, um, really working as a sponsor, I mean, at a CRO, because you're, you're pretty much everything you're doing is being billed to the sponsor. So it can be kind of stressful filling out that time card every week or every other week. I hated that. I absolutely hated that. Um, and I'm glad that I work for a sponsor now. I don't, I don't have to do that anymore. Um, so there's different things. People like working at the CRO. A lot of people like working at the sponsor a little bit better. And I would agree. I do think the life at the sponsor is a little bit better. Um, and that's just a benefit. Um, but typically they pay a little more too, I would say. So I think overall the sponsor is better. Um, overall, overall. But if you're just trying to, you know, level up, level up, level up as fast as possible, then the CRO could be for you. Um, I think academia has its pros and cons too. Um, I've never worked in the academic sector, you know, like for a hospital or for a, um, you know, a research site that's affiliated with a hospital. Um, I've never been a study coordinator, so study coordinators would be able to speak more to that. Um, I'm sure they have some benefits like being able to take classes for free if they're affiliated with an academic institution. Um, I know me personally, I have no interest in going back to school for anything. So, um, but if you do, if you want to go back and get your master's or something, that could be a benefit to you. So there's a lot of different benefits to think about. <coughs> Whoops. Um, a lot of different benefits to think about, but, uh, you just got to see what's right for you. What's the best for you at, at the, at that given moment. Like for example, I don't have kids, so th I could care less about a daycare on campus. Um, but you know, other people that do have kids, that's, that's a big benefit to them. That's something they don't have to pay for because um, daycare can get expensive now. So that's a big perk. Um, so you just got to think about it, what's better for you. But when you're early on in your career, you're just trying to get experience and get a job. So, I mean, obviously you would prefer to be at a better place, uh, but you know, it is what it is. You just got to get the experience how you can, and then hopefully you can transfer to a much better place or get a job later at a different place. So very, very good question on employee benefits. Very, very good. Um, if you guys have any other questions that you'd like for me to answer or get my take on, email me, eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com. Take care, guys.